Hello and welcome to the fourth part of my How to Dogfight series for the War Thunder Simulator Battles. In the last videos I covered situational awareness and energy fighting tactics, but in this part we take a look at the turn fight tactics. I hope you will find this video helpful and entertaining. Let's go! As you may know by now, I'm not a big fan of the turn fight tactic. However, I use the tactic in certain offensive and defensive situations. First in the offensive when I am more maneuverable as my enemy and, this is important, if I am on the same or in a lower energy state. So if I am on a higher energy state and I expect that I can keep the energy advantage over the course of the fight, I stick to an energy fighting style as long as possible. Now you may ask, why? Why should I keep the fight in the vertical when I could easily outturn my enemy? Well first, often you aren't alone in a fight and if you are desperately turning after your enemy, other enemies have an easy time to get on your tail and second, between the attacks I have the time to look around and to keep my situation awareness up as long as possible. In the background footage I am flying the Spitfire Mark 9 and below me are two enemies. One B of 109 and one 190. Through traditional expectations would say that the roles of the planes here should be inverted and that the B of 109 and the Focke Wolf should boom and zoom the Spitfire or that the Spitfire should turn after them desperately. But while I keep myself fast and high here in this situation, I denounce those guys their biggest weapon, the energy advantage. None of my enemies can attack me here and I can choose when to attack and who to attack first. Only as I kill the first enemy here and I have only one enemy remaining, I switch tactics and I use my superior turn fight abilities of the Spitfire. So I repeat myself again here. Turn fighting and energy fighting are tactics, not religions or built in devices in a plane. Tactics can be used and can be switched. To turn in the horizontal is only a different method of using spare energy. In the defensive however, the ability to turn can be a blessing and a curse at the same time. With a good break turn you can avoid the enemy's guns pretty effectively and you can turn the table very quick. However, if the enemy is smart and you overdo it, the enemy can easily exploit your energy loss while you turn around. So again, it's very important to understand that turning in the horizontal is a very aggressive way to spend energy. Every aircraft in air combat has to think about energy before making a move, even when you are a turning tactician. So to turn smart instead of hard is a must here. And how to do it we will see in this video. Now don't worry, don't be afraid of the word science. I don't want to make this chapter into a sole numbers game, but some sciencey things can be helpful to understand what's happening when you outturn your enemy or when you get outturned. First, I want to say that there are two different types of turns, instantaneous turns and sustained turns. If you are turning as hard as you can in a particular situation, it's an instantaneous turn. And a turn over a longer period of time is a sustained turn. Those are two different stories, because in an instantaneous turn we go beyond the aircraft abilities to sustain the turn, we are losing speed and altitude in the process, but in a sustained turn we encounter the energy loss with the engine power. So basically when you go around at 400 kph you can, you can hold that speed, that's a, of course a sustained turn, but if you go in a, in a turn with 400 kph and you want to get the maximum turn performance, that's of course an instantaneous turn. Both turns can be measured with three different values, or at least I want to talk about three, I'm very certain there are more. The first value which comes to mind when we think about turn performance is often the turn radius, measured in meters or miles for the diameter of the entire turning circle. Turn radius of a plane is determined by the speed of the aircraft and of course how much lift the aircraft can create on that particular speed. Generally speaking, more lift and less speed results in a smaller turn radius. Please note that on a very slow speed I mean very slow, the turn circle gets larger again as the aircraft can't produce enough lift anymore to make the turn any tighter. 
Theoretically, you can improve your time performance there with deployment of flaps. However, this will increase drag and this will slow down you even more, which results again in less lift. An equally important value when we talk about turn performance is the turn rate, often measured in degrees per second or in seconds for flying the full circle. As we get faster on a particular turn radius, the turn rate increases until we reach the so-called corner speed. At that speed your plane can't create more lift without risking critical damage. Therefore you can't get faster at that speed without increasing the turn radius and reducing the turn rate. Yes, and now you may understand why it's so important to hold your speed up even when turn fighting. If you are slow, you can't utilize the full potential of a good turning plane. To get slower, to get at or below corner speed is easier than to accelerate. Now you may ask, how fast is corner speed? And this is different for each aircraft. Basically, when you are afraid that you could break your wings in the next turn, then you are above corner speed and you have to reduce your speed a bit when you want to turn harder. And I emphasize on when you want to turn harder. You don't have to fly below corner speed to be awesome. Sometimes you see that in the clips. You often see me shuttle back in turns or in dives, of course sometimes to sneak up onto my enemy, but sometimes to reduce my turn circle, to improve my turn rate, to avoid breaking apart or to reduce my g-load on my crew. Speaking of g-load, 1g is the amount of gravity we all have to endure when we are simply sitting in our chair in front of our PC. But in a plane, when flying a 4G turn, the pilot and the aircraft have to endure 4 times of their weight. The G-load is a good measurement for a turn, because G-load includes turn rate and turn radius. If you pull more G in a turn, you will turn tighter and faster, but you spend much more energy of course. At corner speed, the G-load is at maximum what the airframe can sustain without breaking apart. If you want to know more about this topic, I recommend to read at least the appendix of the highly recommended book Fighter Combat and Maneuvering, which is my primary source for these tutorials. There are two links in the description. The first one is to the physical book on Amazon and if you want to buy it, I get a little from what you pay, but don't worry, you don't pay more as usual. It's a simple ref link, you know, to my Amazon store. I personally like to read this book in my summer vacation, so I like to have a physical copy. However, if you want to read the book on your screen, there's a link to the PDF file, a really great book. I highly, highly recommend it. This may surprise you, but this chapter will be rather short, because I understand fighting in the horizontal, the classic turn fighting, mostly as a defensive tactic. However, the first thing is you should ask yourself before using your turn performance to get onto your enemy's tail, is my turn performance at this very moment better as a turn performance of my enemy? I say this very moment, because if your plane is way above corner speed for example, and the enemy's aircraft is around corner speed, the enemy can outturn you, or make you overshoot even when your aircraft is on paper more maneuverable. You maybe remember the clip in the last video where I turned the P-51 in my Focke-Wolf. If you think that you can outturn your enemy, there are two different types of turns which you can use. If you meet your enemy in a head-on, the first thing which comes to mind is to turn into your enemy. Let's say you pass him on his left, you turn left to get as quickly as possible onto the enemy's tail. When he does the same and his turning ability is sufficient, this will result in another head-on. Only when your turning ability is far superior, you will catch up quickly and you will get the tracking shot position. This is called nose to tail turn, as you turn your nose after the enemy's tail. But there's a far smarter move if your turn radius is far superior. And this is way more energy efficient as you have to turn less for the same effect. And this is a nose to nose turn. In many cases the enemy chooses to turn into you, like before, to the left. If you can anticipate that and you know that the turning performance of your enemy is inferior, you can try to pull away from the enemy. I already said that the enemy has to have a bigger turn radius to make this succeed. But do you remember what I said about the connection between turn radius and speed? 
So when you see that the enemy has a lot of speed and is willing to turn with you and there is no other option, try a nose to nose turn even when you are in a less maneuverable aircraft. You can improve your turn rate a bit by going into the vertical. Let the gravity assist your turn. As the enemy is coming your way, pull your nose slightly up and as the enemy is coming around, roll your aircraft upside down and pull. The gravity will cause that your nose will fall around much quicker. This allows you a snapshot and even more important leads to a surprising and to be honest funny reaction on the other side. Some enemies will react shocked and they spin. Others call for hacks or other enemies will be more careful in the aftermath. Respect can be the thickest armor in a dogfight and it places the enemy in a defensive mindset. And this is how dogfights on the edge can be won. Make the enemy think that he is not as good as you, even when he is clearly at least on par. Of course, the easiest and best way to avoid getting shot down is not to be in the defensive in the first place. But this is of course not always possible. A very common situation is that you see an enemy coming from behind and that you are not in the position to outrun the enemy. But if you saw the enemy early enough, the enemy should be outside of your turn circle. This allows you to turn your nose either with a split S or a simple break turn to the enemy to a force a head on situation. If this is possible, then congrats, you made out of a defensive position a neutral one. Earlier the enemy could only hit you and now you can hit the enemy as well. Not as good as a tracking shot, but heck, that's way better to get shot down from behind. However, if possible, I would not risk my virtual life in a pure head-on attack if I have more options remaining. Especially if I fly the more maneuverable aircraft. But the head-on situation gives us more options after the merge and we can continue either in the offensive with already discussed methods or we can disengage if possible. The situation gets way trickier when the enemy is already closer and is in our turn circle. Here we can't just turn around because the turn performance isn't sufficient regardless what we do. So we have to get a bit frisky like Squire would say here. Before I start, I want to make one thing clear. Every time you get into this situation, you have to get into a certain mindset. Basically, you have to think that the enemy is dead. He doesn't know it yet, but he's basically a gunner. We aren't defending, we are attacking. Yes, it's not visible yet, but it's basically scrap metal what's flying behind you of the future. And the girls with waving flags are waiting for us at the runway to praise our insane skills. Are you now in the right mindset? Good. <coughs> yeah, yeah. And um, that out of the way, I want to talk about two different maneuvers. The most important objective, of course, in such a critical situation must be that the enemy can't shoot or at least has a very hard time to hit anything vital. <coughs> First, let's talk about the flat scissors. The flat scissors are basically a series of nose to nose turns with reversals and therefore the more maneuverable aircraft has in most cases the advantage. It's basically a contest in who can fly slower and who can turn harder at the same time without stalling. It's a good way to throw off the attacker's aim and to benefit of a better turning or rolling aircraft. I personally initiate the flat scissors when my attacker is very close and or I'm close to the ground and I can't initiate rolling scissors, which I much prefer. The first thing you do is breaking hard to one side and as he is trying to pull lead on you, you reverse and you go in the other direction. He has to reverse as well, but of course delayed as he has to react to your movement. You dictate when to reverse. Keep him guessing. If you have enough speed, you should throttle back. How much you throttle back is highly dependent of the situation but I like to hold my throttle between 40 and 80%. Deploy flaps if you have to get a bit more lift. This should provide still enough thrust to keep you in the air, but causes that the enemy will come closer and closer as he's trying to cut into your turns. Until that point where he is catching up with you or is even overshooting. Your scissors are working if the enemy gets out of phase and he is no longer at your tail but has only the possibility to shoot when both of you are meeting up in the middle. At that point you have to make sure to decrease the chance that he hits something important. 
I like to hold my wings parallel to his flight path to avoid hits on my wings. To be honest, I'm certainly not the best in flat scissoring as this situation develops in my fighting style rather rare. Mostly when I get into trouble, I'm either instantly dead or I am at very high speed and my evasive actions are more vertical. But if I have no choice, I use flat scissors either to buy me time or to exploit certain disadvantages of my opponent. For example, if I get surprised by a Tempest or a Spitfire on high speed, flat scissors are a good way to exploit the slow roll rate of those aircrafts on those speeds. They almost can't change directions here, so either they rip their wings in the attempt to do the reversal with me, or they overshoot as they can't reduce their forward movement sufficient enough. Speaking of vertical high speed maneuvers, if the enemy is coming from a higher position and is further out, I try to avoid his guns by doing a barrel roll. The barrel roll is a nice maneuver to get out of the way without spending too much energy, as you don't change direction in the flight basically. Often this is sufficient to make the attacker miss and to be still fully capable to continue the chase. If the attacker isn't too fast, sometimes you are able to get the shot there. On the other hand, sometimes the attacker don't push us through, he starts to roll after you. So he's answering my barrel roll with a barrel roll. This is called rolling scissors, as both participants are rolling around each other to get behind the other one. Basically a fight who can decrease forward movement more without slowing down the aircraft airspeed wise. Sometimes that looks pretty much like dancing and is without a doubt one of my favorite maneuvers as it is just fun. The goal is basically the same as with flat scissors to bring the enemy to an overshoot and to get the enemy out of phase. For that try to move your aircraft in smooth and consistent rolls and watch your enemy carefully. Often this maneuver isn't decided by the best rolling plane or the most maneuverable aircraft, but who can conserve his energy better. The first plane which stalls or can't get the rolls wide enough will be too fast and will overshoot. Please note that in rolling scissors you can use the gravity again to your advantage. When you are above and the enemy below, your turn rate will be boosted by the g-force, so try to get behind your opponent when coming from above. But this is it for this video, I hope you liked it. I could talk about those topics forever really, I have so much material, I have researched so much stuff, it's, it's really hard to get everything in one video, so if you have questions please drop a comment. I have plans to make more videos, I have planned one video about gunnery, I have one video planned for team play, I have one video planned for trim and manual engine controls. And at this point I really want to ask you, which do you want to see? Just pick one of those I mentioned. For the next video I just pick the most demanded one. Please drop a comment here. Subscribe if you want to see more. Have a nice day. See you next time.